so I've decided to become an English teacher. Teaching English as a second language um, is something that is growing. A lot of people forget there's other parts of the world. Latin America and the China, etc. There's a huge market there for teaching English. Now, from somebody who loves traveling, it opens up parts of the world I wouldn't normally, well, not wouldn't consider, wouldn't have normally thought about, but would love to go. I was reading a guy's blog uh, this week, Gordon sent it over, regarding somebody teaching English in Grenada. Now, that appeals to me. I know it doesn't appeal to everybody, but also if you're in the Philippines, for example, teaching English online with the Koreans is quite common. There's a lot of people that do that. But if you can actually get your uh, certificates, why not teach other people um, outside of that? As long as you've got good internet, you can teach globally. Teaching globally opens the money up. Uh, and it's something I recommend for those that are thinking about moving to the Philippines or anywhere else. English speaking is something that Spain's investing heavily in since its economy tanked. They know that getting that barrier um, crossed will help the Spanish economy. But it's also aware that it's not just Spain. You know, a lot of saying um, about Grenada, teaching in Grenada, teaching on all the Spanish speaking nations, because if they can cross into the uh, the English language for business and everything else, they are also putting themselves one step ahead of the majority of other countries that don't speak Spanish because obviously they'll be able to speak English and Spanish, but also it means they put them ahead locally because a lot of the, the work in Spain I've come across is Brits that are translating for Brits. Um, if I'm fluent in Spanish, for example, I can find work here all day long. Um, I will per persevere with learning Spanish, but I think it's going to take me up to two years to get anywhere near where I'd like to be. Um, doesn't mean I couldn't start making money on it though, because it, I'm already to a point where I'm starting to understand more and more on a daily basis. But once I start getting into full-blown translation, there's a license to print money. And the Spanish are already seeing that. If they can speak English the other way around, why don't they do it? So, yeah, there's huge potential there. And I, I highly recommend it if you're serious about traveling. What's the pay? Well, the pay isn't fantastic, but here in Spain, it works out from the guys I know, about 1,200 euros a month. And people will be, I know, I can hear it already. That's not a lot of money. They only work a 20 hour week. Uh, that's not bad going part time. On top of that, you've got the other side of it, you're living in a fantastic country. Um, on top of that, it doesn't mean you can stop earning, you can do other stuff to earn money. I'll be honest with you, if I was uh, teaching Spanish and April was teaching, uh, teaching Spanish 20 hours a week each, we wouldn't need to do anything else. Um, our cost of living in Spain is approximately a thousand euros a month. Now, bearing in mind, if you see some of our food photos, most of our food is fresh. Um, we, we have our, there's, there's farms and stuff on our doorstep. The seafood's fantastic. Um, we spend most of our time with the kids, you know. Even if I went to school, um, I would still, obviously it was fit in with uh, the school, the kids being at the same school with a bit, fingers crossed. So you got that whole more family orientated lifestyle, but also it's the balance. Your balance of life is far superior than most people. Uh, like I said on my last video, a lot of the school teachers in the UK want to quit. Why? Well, over 60% over of them, well, it's, I think it's about 53, up, 53 to 60% want to quit. The reason being is they're working 60 hours a week. Now, I've done it myself for years, but once I um, got married, spent time with April and stuff, I've started to say, what's the point? What's the point of all that money? Um, 
exactly. I'm just sitting there thinking, well, there isn't. I'd much rather, much rather be doing this sort of stuff, stood on the beach, watching the sun, telling you that there's other alternatives to your day-to-day -day lifestyle. That's far more interesting, far more important, and just as important, I'm showing I can do it. And I have been doing it. Um, this journey started in 2007. I'm still traveling. Like I said, we're here in Spain. The kids are here for their EU education, but we may end up in Germany. We may end up in Portugal, Gibraltar, or anywhere else. Um, we are not rooted somewhere permanently. It's not a negative thing. It is the fact is, education-wise, I want my kids to be able to not only speak multiple languages, but also understand them, understand cultures, understand the bits and pieces that a lot of the world seems to be missing. I mean, this is the joke in the UK. They're more interested in people being well-rounded people, yet missing the basics on English, um, written English, spoken English, sciences, mathematics. And then they go, oh yeah, but they're, they understand gay and lesbian rights. Right, well, that, they can talk about that at the job center. Um, I find it completely nuts. So, yeah, highly recommend having a look at teaching English as a foreign language. Um, it's not difficult. There's different types of courses. There's some you can do online. The best ones, I think it's CELTA, C-E-L-T-A, which a lot of the big schools and the international ones would love for you to have. Um, doesn't mean it's impossible, but if other people are going for the same jobs with those skills and qualifications, they're going to get a head start on you. I would also say that doing a course where you actually attend the school has more value because a lot of the stuff online, you, know, you haven't done any classroom work and that's something they're really looking for. At the same time, there's nothing to say you can't gain that with a local school. Volunteer, see if they'll let you do stuff um, and then maybe they'll support it with some letters if you can't actually afford to do it on a course. There's always ways around it. See, this is the thing, everyone assumes there's one structure to things, but a lot of the companies I know, well, the old companies I used to know, they're now corporate Muppets, um, used to prefer people that think out the box. People would turn around and say, well, they've all structured a class on a system that was based on doing it a certain way. The way I do it, um, I can actually show that I've done it with classrooms off my own bat. I've got it, uh, principals that have supported it. I've got teachers that have actually attended and witnessed my teaching. Um, that's far more important. All right, thanks for watching.